when when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, they made me mad. Uh, and I, it wasn't long after that that I that I enlisted, along with a lot of others. Of course, if I hadn't enlisted, that I would have been drafted. But I, I, I sort of figured that. If I enlisted, maybe I might get what I really wanted, which I didn't. Um, I wanted to be a photographer, and I wanted them to put me in the in the photographic portion of it so I could be taking the pictures, because I loved photography, and uh, in fact, I did it all all of my life. I'm 90 years old right now, uh, and I've I just quit taking pictures about four years ago. Uh, so I've ta I've got uh, I I've made uh, my wife and I have been to 33 countries and every state in the union, every province in Canada, and almost every whatever they call them in Mexico. And I have probably. 6,000 slides that I can show pictures from every one of them, all set up in a, in a show. Uh, I'm in, I lost my wife last year. We were married 68 years. So I, I, and two years ago, I was down here for the Battle of the Bolts with Mark, uh, with her. We went, uh, after the Battle of the Bolts, I, now it's coming to me. Um, the company uh, went on and took Nuremberg and, and then Munich, and, and they, they started talking about the end of the war. And for some reason, the company I don't know whether they were trying to give me some R&R &R or what, but they sent me to Paris for, to, for a school. It was about two weeks. And the, the end of the war talks were beginning to uh, emerge. And in fact, we, we, uh, the six of us stayed two extra days in Paris um, trying to make the end of the war in Paris, but it didn't work. So I had to go back to Germany. And then they, they sent me out on detached service to a small town outside of Munich. Oh, wait a minute, there's a story about Munich. Uh, you want me to go on? Oh, I'd love to. If you're willing to talk, I'm willing to listen. Uh, while we were in Munich, an entire squadron of Nazi planes flew in and surrendered because and they had just enough fuel to make Munich because they didn't want to surrender to the Russians. So they came in and surrendered to, to the guys in, in Munich. That, I, I wanted to tell you that. Oh, and then oh, we were in this small town and, and the war really ended. Uh, but, we, you know, uh, um, um, we had FM radio in those days, and we were trying to hear about the end of the war. And because the mountains were so high, we couldn't, we never got any. So actually, the war had been over for two whole days before we knew that it was really over. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, I, th I think they call it an FM bounce, have you ever heard of such a thing? I think so. uh, 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 BBC from, from London came in on our radio and we heard them raving, you know, hollering and screaming and everything. So we actually knew the war was over. Um, They said at that point they sent us back to Marseille where we had the invasion, 
and we were there for I, oh almost a month. Now I have three battle stars on here, uh, so they told us originally that they weren't going to send us to Japan, but they were. Uh, we were in a holding area, and if the war had not ended, uh, that we we would have been set. But then Truman saved my skin, and uh, with the bombs, along with a lot of other men, and uh, the war ended. The VJ Day. Then while while I was in Marseille, in this holding area. In fact, the the. Uh, <laughs> holding area was called the Leslie J. McNair. I forget something. And uh, then, uh, uh, let's see, uh, it only, we came home on a ship, oh, I, I, I've forgotten the name of it, and, and I don't remember the one going over at all. Uh, Harry, Harry, no, I, I don't remember. Harry something. Well, it's not that important. But, but it only took us six days to come home. We got home. Uh, it, we landed in New York and went up and then took a train down to Fort Dix again, where I was. And my company got discharged. I'm sitting there, not discharged, along with one other guy from the company. Well, of course, I was going to... Trenton to see my wife every night, but I, after about 10 days, I was getting angry. And I, 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 before I had gone overseas, I had helped the, why, uh, the, oh, what do you call it? The, anyway, it was showing movies to, to the guys. And I knew uh, Mrs. Grobler. And so I called her on the phone and I said, hey, Mrs. Grobler, I'm, we've been back here for 10 days. My name has never been called once. I don't think they're re that they know I'm even here. I said, would you help me? She says, certainly. She called the commanding officer of Fort Dix and I was discharged the next day. <laughs> I guess my records had been lost or something. I never did find out what, but that and so that ended it in 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 November of 1945. People are congratulating me and everything for doing my job, but I, it was a job. You you you. Oh, there is one thing. Many times when I would go in this, these couriers from 7th Army Headquarters to Corps, I had to go by 105 howitzers where they, and, and I never knew for sure whether they were shooting those things off to, to scare me or whether, the, whether it was just a normal time, but they, they shot a lot of them off, everyone. You know, it didn't worry me a single bit while I was there and in the Army. I came home after I was discharged, for two whole years, I couldn't go to, to 4th of July. The noise the, uh, of the firecrackers going off, and it made me shake. Now, I didn't do any of that while it, while it was happening. It, it, I, I didn't even think about it. It was the aftermath. So I'm sure it, I guess in the back of my mind, it was there. Uh, but I, I want them to bring our boys home. No, I, I think we've done our, I think the United States has done its duty now and let somebody else do it. 